Hey everyone, I'm Mr. A, and today we're going to talk about double triangle trigonometry. Now what I mean when I say double triangle trigonometry is that we have a picture or a setup where there are multiple triangles and we're going to end up choosing two of them to work with. So we're not going to employ anything new in this video, we're just going to be looking at more advanced applications of what we've already done. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. If you look at this picture right off the bat, hopefully you notice that there are multiple triangles. There is this little right triangle here, there's this larger right triangle here, and then there's this other triangle which is not a right triangle. Now that's important. The trigonometry we've been talking about, sine, cosine, tangent, those only work for now at least, in a right triangle. That means that we have to pay attention to what triangles we have information about. Now what makes this an interesting problem is that the thing we're looking for, the x right here, is part of this non-right triangle. In other words, there's no right triangle in this picture that I could use to solve for this length all by itself. Now before we solve this, let's just take a look at some other versions of a very similar picture that would not be as interesting. What if, for example, the x was over here? Well, then the side we're looking for is actually a side of this little red triangle, and we can just do tangent, right? Opposite over adjacent with the angle 48 there. Simple tangent problem. What if instead the x was over here on the hypotenuse of the large triangle? Well, then again, it's just a simple sine problem using that large right triangle. This would be the angle we'd use, 37, and that's the opposite side. That's the hypotenuse. It's a simple sine problem. What if we move the x here? Now this is a side in the non-right triangle, so it might make this an interesting problem, but it's also the hypotenuse of the little right triangle. So we don't need to make it interesting, we can just do a simple sine opposite over hypotenuse in this little red triangle. Even if I put the x down here, that's just a side of the large right triangle, and we can do a simple tangent here, and we can solve using the large right triangle. What makes this interesting then is that the side we're looking for is just not a side of one of the right triangles. Well, how do we solve this then? What we're going to do is take some of the other right triangles in the picture and use them to figure this out. So for example, if I were to call this piece um, A here, so if I were to redraw that little right triangle, it would look like this. So we can simply say that the tangent of 48 is 200 over A, and then we can cross multiply, getting A times the tangent of 48 equals 200, and that gives us a to be the 200 divided by the tangent of 48. So that's true, but how is that helpful? We don't want to know what a is, we want to know what x is. Well, the key there is in realizing that in this larger triangle, which is also a right triangle, we can solve for the missing side just like we did there. So imagine if I look at the larger triangle and I call this missing side b. Well, b is right here in the original picture. And b again, we can solve by simply using tangent. So we can say the tangent of 37 is 200 over b, cross multiplying gives us b times the tangent of 37 is 200, and then dividing both sides by tangent 37, we get b is equal to 200 divided by the tangent of 37. But what we want is x. Well, what's the relationship between a, b, and x? Hopefully you can see that x is just b minus a. If you can't see that, you can think that a plus x is b. That's definitely true. And then if you simply subtract a from both sides, you'll get this equation here, x equals b minus a. And we can plug this into our calculator and find out that a is approximately, we'll say 180.0808. Now I actually just store that in my calculator as the letter a, because that'll let me hang on to all of those decimal places. That goes on for a little bit longer. Plugging b into our calculator, we get approximately 265.4089643. Again, I'm going to store that in my calculator as the variable b. So I'll just ask my calculator to do b minus a, and I get x to be approximately 85.328. Looking back over what we did here, all we did was solve two simple tangent problems in two different right triangles, and then we use those results to calculate the thing we were looking for, x. We had to do this because the x was not inside of a right triangle, so we had to use the right triangles that were available to us to get to x. Let's take a look at another one. The x we're looking for is not a part of a right triangle. That's going to make this an quote-unquote interesting problem. Let's think about what we can use then. We can use this small triangle here. We can use that to say the tangent of 40 is 25 over a, giving us a times the tangent of 40 is 25, and a is 25 divided by the tangent of 40. That gives us an a of approximately 29.793 and some change, and I'm just going to go ahead and store that in my calculator as the variable a, so I'll have it for later. Then in order to get to x, we need to figure out what this side is. If we call that side b, we can now use this larger triangle here, 
And in this triangle, we can again use the tangents. That'll give us the tangent of 15 is equal to 25 over b. So b times the tangent of 15 is 25. And that gives us b equal to 25 divided by the tangent of 15. b is approximately 93.30127 and some change. I will store that value in my calculator as b. And then as before, in order to get to x, we can simply observe that x is b minus a. If you have stored these values in your calculator, you can just do b minus a. That's what I'll be doing. And otherwise, you can just write all the decimals down and subtract them. Either way, you should get x approximately equal to 65 point, let's call that 507 for this one. Again, we're not doing anything particularly clever. We're simply using two right triangle problems in order to solve for the thing that we're looking for, which is not in a right triangle. So here we've got, again, a problem where what we're looking for is not part of a right triangle, right? This is a side only in this other triangle. So we've got to use the right triangles that we have. Let's start with this little guy here. I can put an A there. That will give us tangent of 50 is equal to A over 100, which means that A is equal to 100 times the tangent of 50, which is approximately 119.175 and some change. Again, I will store that value in my calculator as A so that I can access it easily later on in the problem. In order to figure out what X is, we also need to know what this longer side is. To do that, we'll look at this larger triangle here. We do need to be a little bit careful about that angle up there. This angle here is actually both of these angles in the original picture. So it's not 17 and it's not 50. It is in fact 67. This gives us the tangent of 67 is B over 100. So B is 100 times the tangent of 67. And that gives us B approximately 235.585 and some change. Once again, I will store that in my calculator as B. So I'll have access to it later. In order to find X, we simply need to note that X is B, the larger piece, minus A, the smaller piece. If you've stored those values in your calculator the way I have, you can simply type in B minus A. Otherwise, write down all the decimals and keep track of everything. And we get X approximately 116.4. Oh, let's see, it's 098, so I guess I'll go 0.41 on this one. So again, I don't have any rounding instructions here. I'm just going to round something that seems reasonable to me for the purpose of the example. Always follow rounding instructions in the problem. Let's take a look at one last example here. Once again, you'll notice that the part we're looking for, what we're being asked to solve for, is not part of a right triangle. That's what makes this the kind of problem where we have to use more than one triangle. So if I call this piece here A, then I can use this smaller right triangle on the bottom. The tangent of 20 is A over 250. So A is 250 times the tangent of 20, which is approximately 90.9925 and some more. I'll go ahead and again store that in my calculator as A, so I have access to it later. And then the other piece that we need to know is this larger piece here. I'm a little squished on the side, I apologize. And that would be this big triangle here. So notice that I'm always redrawing the triangle. I don't want to ever try to work off the original picture. When you do that, you can make simple mistakes that lead to problems. So it's always a good idea to redraw that triangle. It doesn't take very long to do it. Here again, we want to be careful about this angle. This angle is both of these two angles put together. So it's not 20, it's not 8, it's 28. That gives us the tangent of 28 is B over 250. So B is 250 times the tangent of 28, giving us approximately 132.927 and some change. Here again, I will store that in my calculator as the value B. Once again, X is B minus A. And we can simply ask our calculator what B minus A is. We should get approximately, so let's go 41.935 on this one. And that's really all there is to these problems. Again, what makes this problem one that you have to pay a little more attention to is that what you're looking for, the, the, the side you're being asked to solve for, is not a side of a right triangle. That's a dead giveaway that you're going to have to work a little bit harder because you can't just set up a sine or a cosine or a tangent. But... It's not much harder. You just need to do two right triangles. So look in the picture for the right triangles that you have, draw them separately, and think about how you can use those to find the piece that you want. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.